I have looked forward to this meeting for a long time because as a government, um, we believe that uh, we must plan and we must have an implementation plan of what we have planned. And part of what we have, the very conscious decision we have made is that we want to harmonize all the resources that we have. We want to bring together all the actors on matters Kenya, from our development partners to the UN agencies like yourselves, to the private sector and to everybody else, so that we do not work at cross purposes, but we create synergy that gives us results and good results for everybody. <coughs> when in November 2016, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon hosted the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, Turkey, where I represented President Kenyatta, the core quest was to build global consensus on human security for people caught in humanitarian crisis, including war, public health epidemics, or climate-induced displacements. This summit typified what the UN is all about, a global force for good and a veritable instrument of multilateralism needed to negotiate credible outcomes to solve complex global challenges in a world driven by disparate state interests. At the country level, the UN Development Assistance Framework represents the spirit of collaboration and collective action. I am therefore pleased that, they, that this UNDAF 2018-2022 for Kenya is a product of more than 100 different organizations working together under the leadership of the two government ministries, National Treasury and Devolution, as well as the UN country, deep, uh, country team. Rather than obsess over their different mandates, these institutions were led by a singular focus on the mission at hand, that of, that of giving a blueprint for creating the Kenya that secures a better future for our children. Embodied within UNDAF are a set of clear and time-bound interventions underpinned by SDGs and aligned to Kenya's development plans as articulated in Vision 2030 and more immediately by the Big Four agenda. I have listened to the eminent presentations and looked closely at the 14 outcomes of this new generation uh, UN development assistance. In them, I see the building blocks needed for a stable, inclusive and prosperous policy. This UNDAF has identified these sectors in which we can invest strategically for the youth. We are determined that in our time, we must lay the foundation on which hard work will be rewarded and employment that is good enough to enable them to raise a family comfortably achieved. That is what reaping the, democratic, the demographic dividend is all about. How we will keep that promise alive is the defining issue of our collaboration with the UN. From this administration's first term and now, we have enhanced youth-specific affirmative action. For instance, through reserving government procurement quotas for the youth by way of the access to government procurement opportunities commonly known as ACPO framework. We are implementing the most ambitious program on human capital development focused on technical and vocational training that has seen an increase in the number of Tibet institutions from less than 700 in 2013 to about 1,000 in 2018. For the first time since independence, the number of students enrolling into our Tibet institutions now exceed those joining universities. This is a tectonic shift in priorities driven by the government's commitment 
to align training with market needs and to the demands of the Ford Industrial Revolution. As such, we are also developing ICT incubation hubs at county level with plans for extending these to constituencies to empower youth with the training and work experience appropriate for market-ready ICT services and products. Already, we are seeing the fruits of such investment, especially in high multiplier effect sectors such as agriculture. Increasingly, tech-savvy youth are developing products that are transforming the way we practice agriculture. The paradigm is slowly shifting from practicing agriculture as a way of life. The paradigm is slowly shifting from practicing agriculture as a way of life to seeing it as a business that can provide gainful employment. The adoption of better crop varieties, improved management practices, and mechanization will give the sector the allure that will attract the youth. Further, UNDAV's commitment to devolution as a mechanism of fostering shared prosperity and stability in Kenya cannot be understated. The cry of marginalization no longer serves as a centrifugal disruptor of our stability thanks largely to devolution. Rather than tinker with devolution as constitutionally entrenched, we must instead invest in effective implementation and institutionalization thereof and improve accountability, transparency, and openness within devolved units. Our pursuit of inclusive development will be undermined unless there is deliberate effort to ensure environmental sustainability. I note that UNDAV's social pillar is focused on disaster risk reduction. Given that Nairobi is the headquarters of the UN in the global south, I encourage this UN country team in Kenya to invest more in sustainability and resilience. The dangers represented by the failure to decarbonize by 2030 and its implica implications on health and agricultural production means that we all must do more to conserve the environment. Our forests, as the natural carbon sink, must be preserved and sustainable locking practices curtailed and new forest regeneration encouraged. I urge the UN, especially UNEP, to work more concertedly with our Environment Ministry and its agencies to, emulate, to formulate and implement innovative ideas in our forestry sector. It is because we believe in the place of the UN in our development path that the government is keen to see the UN agencies work with us with one voice. Kenya is a strong supporter of the delivery as one principle. For this reason, Kenya endorses and welcomes Secretary General Guterres' ongoing reforms of the United Nations. These reforms will see the organization become more agile, nimble, and effective to respond better to development needs at country level. We urge the UN country team to wholeheartedly em embrace these reforms. Before I conclude, I am proposing that to keep our eyes on the goal, the UNDAF National Steering Committee should give special consideration to mechanisms for reporting on impact. My office would be happy to be part of such a quarterly reporting forum. I believe there is no room why we should not deliver this. There is no reason, sorry. I believe that there is no reason why we should not deliver the UNDAF to Kenyans. The Building Bridges Initiative has granted us a moment of great opportunity where all political rivalries are crumbling. The collaboration with the UN through the UNDAF is a blueprint for this road 
to a more stable and secure future. You can count on the President and myself to fully support your important work to deliver the Big Four and the UNDAF for the benefit of every Kenyan. Tomorrow, we will be having a big meeting with the, our UN development partners, which you will be part of. That is part of our consolidation of all the efforts so that we can focus on results and we can focus on creating synergy as opposed to working differently or working um, in silos or working uh, at cross purposes. And it is our commitment that we need to harness every resource, idea, and uh, financing that we can master to be able to deliver on the big four. We have seen over the last five years how much can be achieved when people work together in the same direction. So to you as a, as a team from the UN, I will be very happy if uh, we can have a concerted effort in this direction. And at the heart of this transformation program that we have rolled out since 2013 is the millions of young people and women who specifically will become the beneficiaries of this transformation. It is very clear to us that harnessing the energy, the talent, the expertise of youth and women will provide the engine for the transformation of our country. And therefore, um, from what we've done in the last four or five years, from matters to do with infrastructure, the development of the standard gauge railway, the many road programs we've done, the universal health care coverage that we are um, almost concluding its implementation, through all the other programs that we have done, our focus has been how to give jobs to our young people, how to empower women and mainstream their participation and their um, energy and talent in terms in, in matters to do with driving our economy forward. Because for a very long time, they were excluded from the mainstream. And therefore, it is important to us, and that is where we believe the game, the game changer will be when we bring them on board. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm available for any question. Anybody who wants to ask me any question.